All right. Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is uh, Tim Vixay with my crippled friend, and we're uh, we're back here in Poplar Grove, Illinois, at the uh, Oscar Mike Compound, and I am sitting across the table from my newest crippled friend, uh, Mackenzie Curran. Yeah. Hi. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Good. Um, we met just a couple days ago. Yes. You're kind of like one of the newest faces around, like Oscar Mike. Yes. What um, how, what made you decide to want to get involved with a bunch of degenerates like us? <laughs> okay, um, I work at uh, I used to work at Braveheart. Yeah. And I know a uh, um. Some, some, uh, uh, connect, uh, Noah and I met. Yeah. And. Okay. Yeah. And, and for those that don't know, Brave Hearts is a equestrian center. Yes. Just yes. kind of not, not too far from here, right? Yeah. yeah. Two. Yes. Yes. Have you, um, have you like always grown up around horses or? No. What'd you do at Bravehearts though? Uh, I volunteer at Braveheart. Yeah. Yeah. Like, would you go like shovel horse shit or? Yes. Really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not normally a horse person. No, uh, I love horses and, um, the friend you should go to Braveheart. I haven't been. So um, when we did the weekly program, like when Noah and I did it, um, I didn't get the paperwork done in time because I got it like two days before I was supposed to fly out. And I was like, there's no way I'm going to be able to go see my nurse at the VA to get this filled out. So yeah. I still actually haven't ever been up there. But I've met, um, i trying to think one of the names of the gal, but I met her at the, uh, the Boone County Fair like oh. last year. Oh, okay. Kind of a pretty girl. Um, I'm trying to remember her name though. Casey. It might have been. It might have been Casey, but. Blonde hair. I think so. Yeah. Okay. It's, it was. I don't know. It was over a year ago, so yeah. I don't really remember. But no. Um, from everyone that I've talked to, like the equestrian therapy that we do is, it like it's it's kind of hit or miss because like a lot of people. Or just like I don't see the benefit in this, or or they I think they just go in with kind of like some preconceived like well, this is stupid or yeah but, um I uh like horses come come to protect they have kind of like a sixth sense yes, where they just yes. kind of like they feed off of like your energy. Mm -hmm. Like, it, yes, yeah. yes. It's kind of like, um, you know how like some people like they, they'll, they'll be like, yeah, my dog just knows if a person is like yes. bad or something. Yeah. But I think horses have that sense, but like amplified, I don't know how many times, but I mean, I, and I haven't been around horses like Ever? that long, like not, not like extent probably not to the extent that you have. I've never shoveled horse shit or anything. <laughs> You know? Yeah, I, I did. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. No shame in it. You got to do what you got to do. Yeah. Um, so, like, actually, I think we should um, let's rewind it real quick. And we normally don't do this, but um, and, and by this, I mean, like, kind of like focus on the disability. But I think in your case, it is kind of a unique injury, especially compared to some of the other guests I have on, because normally they're paralyzed or are dealing with some kind of like debilitating disease, you know, mm -hmm. but so, and, and I actually, I don't really know your story that well. Cause I mean, like I said, if we just met like 48 hours yeah. ago, <laughs> but, um, what, how would you describe your injury? Okay. I like to be called brain explosion, Badger. Yes. Um, Your brain explosion? Yeah. Uh, it's true. Because that's essentially yeah. what happened, right? But the medical term. Um, brain aneurysm. Mm -hmm. um, AVM. 
Yeah. And how old were you when this happened? I was 16. Which is kind Tech. of unique, right? Because normally... Yeah, no, uh, older. It's it's normally the older crowd, yeah. yeah. I actually, I had a, um, a really good friend in grade school. His mom passed away from a brain aneurysm. Oh, uh, yeah. same. And then a, a girl I went to high school with, um, she had one. She must have been maybe 19 or 20 uh, when she had hers. And um, lived? Oh, yeah, yeah. And she actually, um, you know, we're not really, like, good friends anymore, but I still follow her on, you know. Oh, Facebook. I still stalk her yeah. on Facebook. But, um, <laughs> no, it seems like she's living a, you know, completely normal life. I think she's, like, a cheerleading coach now and um, pretty much made a full recovery because I remember talking with her when it first happened. And really? Yeah, she still had, like, a lot of, like, speech issues, Um but I think for the most part, I mean, she's still got kind of that, like, that aneurysm accent, I guess you would call it. Yeah. But, um, but for 16, like that's, it seems like that's very young. Um, um, I was born with it. Um, like, uh, the, uh, vessel mm -hmm. rumble. So they knew about this before, or no. was this? No. They 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 knew uh, after. after. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, can you just kind of describe like the events of that day when that happened? Okay. Um. My. My dad. Um. My dad. Uh. My dad lay off mm -hmm. thank god i did not be there yeah um um dad wake um kenzie kenzie wake up wake up you were at home at the time uh in the uh morning yeah. i i think alarm wake me up mm -hmm. but i don't know yeah um okay um and annie my dog um barking constantly um and um at me yeah um it's it goes back to what we said like yes, the, i think the dog yes. knew something was wrong yeah um and dad went upstairs and see what's going on um, like, yeah. i uh i didn't uh know like the right side is like cold mm -hmm. and uh seizure and you remember this like no, no at all no. yeah N no um, I was vomiting and yeah. That is so scary. Uh, I can't imagine me. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, cause I mean, when you went to bed that night, yeah, everything, like there wasn't any like symptoms or anything like you didn't feel um, weird or. Yeah. Uh, headache. A little bit of headache. Yeah. Uh, a lot. But I mean, like, no. what, like, because you're what, like, a sophomore or a junior at 16? Uh, junior. So, yeah, you were in junior in high school, like. Yeah. Like, you don't, like, you're just uh, like, oh, I just got a headache. Drive, like, I drive. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, so it was, um, so obviously they rushed you to the hospital. Yes. Um, yes, uh, I, the doctor, Brayton, saved my life. Um, my dad, um, uh, my mom, uh, three doctors, you are pair yourself. Um, Mackenzie are, is gonna die. Um, five percent 
That is that. Five percent that you were gonna die, or five percent that you're gonna live. Way by. Do you mean five percent that you're gonna die, or no? Sweat. Five percent you're gonna live. Yeah. Yeah. So somehow you pulled through. Yeah. Um, I was I was a year round volleyball and track and healthy. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so what were like your first earliest memories that you like? Do you remember? I was. Were you like completely paralyzed at the point or was it just your right side? Right side. Mm -hmm. The whole thing. Like, I mean, head to toe, right side. Yeah. And um, so, I mean, like when I met you, it took me a while to kind of figure out like i was like oh wait something's up yeah and then i was like okay i i see now but yes because like now you're walking around pretty well like you and i just went to the liquor store and i mean you were able to help me up the ramp like how long did it take for things to start coming back okay uh i was okay two uh two months in uh rehabilitation yeah uh and oh i cannot speak like five words oh like yeah a baby yeah because your speech now is is a lot better thank you for sure yeah <laughs> but you. that's one thing i noticed like with my friend from high school like her her speech was really slow and it, like you could yeah. see like she's trying to get the words out but it was like making the connection but um uh like i yeah so did you have to go to uh, like just a bunch of different therapies for oh yes how long like so like there was physical therapy uh speech therapy and then, yeah speech uh physical therapy um what, so what was like going through your head as a teenager you know like like what were your thoughts about because you know every 16 year old has dreams and ambitions and yeah. these grand plans that they want to do and then all of a sudden you get thrown into yes a different world and you're like what the fuck am I gonna do now you know yes. so um I wanna I used to love PE teacher. Yeah. And, or math. Math? Love math. Really? Yes. Just math. I would not have ever <laughs> guessed that at all. Really? No, uh, yeah. PE teacher for sure. Yes. You would have been the chick. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you would have been the chick like in yes. like just it's sweats like or it, shorts yes. Yes. with the whistle. Just <laughs> let's go. Come on. <laughs> Put yes. some pep in your step. <laughs> See? Yeah. Today we're playing dodgeball. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next week, volleyball. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Your, your PE class would just be, just, we're just going to do volleyball. Yeah. Just, come All on. Year. Everything, everything we're doing is just volleyball. So. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, oh. Uh, okay. Um, the... Speech there. Okay, I did not. I I used to uh, wheelchair. Yeah. Uh, six months. Yeah. Did that? That must have fucking sucked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> six months in a wheelchair. Yeah. Oh man. Sorry. I'm, damn. Oh, uh, and uh, um, cane and so then you so you graduated from a chair to a cane mm -hmm. yeah. and yeah and then i mean how long did it take for you to ditch the cane ditch the cane um okay because I, I i still uh I, in high school uh, Kane is co-wired. 
Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, just me. But... So let's dig into that. Like, how long did it take for you to go back to school? Oh, uh, fall. Uh, uh, wait, so when did I your? Wa- okay. Um, like, uh, St. Patrick's. Day. That's when your injury happened. Yeah. On yeah. St. Patrick's Day. Yes. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. So yeah, that's only six Mar- months, right? So you yeah, yeah. yes, um, March seventeenth, twenty ten. Yeah. So now, did you finish that year? Like, did you were you doing homework mm. during rehab and all that, or no? Um, I was a super senior. Oh, are you? Like, There's no I, shame in that. Yeah. I was held back in fifth grade, so yeah. I mean, whatever, and fuck what, it. Like, yes. <laughs> take your time. It's the easiest time in your life. Why wouldn't you want to do another year? Yeah. Like, what, yeah. what's the rush? Fuck it. <laughs> no, I got I got held back because uh, we made a I, I think we talked about this. Like, I yep. didn't have any interest in school. Yep. So I just fucked you around a were, lot. You uh, were genius. I wasn't a genius, but okay. I was a smart kid who just didn't apply himself. Yeah. So I would just never do homework and I didn't have any interest in school. Like, and so I just pretty yeah. much fucked around and my mom was just like, we're going to put you in private school. And when I went to private school and took their little test to see if I could go to the sixth grade, they were like, yeah, this guy doesn't know how to do his fucking fractions. Like he can't even like add or subtract fractions. I don't know what the lowest common denominator is. We're going to have to hold him back. Um, which, you know, that was, I think that was good for me because, like, I was always the youngest kid in class because I was born August 30th. Ah. And the cutoff is Labor Day. <laughs> so I was always the youngest kid in, in class. But then when I got held back, I became the oldest kid in class. Okay. And yes. I think that helped out a lot, just the maturing process. And then, I mean, private school is a lot different than public. I mean, my first teacher oh. there was a nun. We, really? Yeah, we it, Sister Mary Beth. <laughs> yep, she was a full blown Providence nun, and I mean wore the yeah. veil and everything. It was if she could hit us with a ruler, she a hundred percent would have. If it oh, was yeah. like nineteen eighty and she could hit us with a ruler, she a hundred percent would have. But she fucking straightened me right out, <laughs> real quick, and then I, I started tolerating school, I guess what you would say, but. Uh- yeah i was never interested in just any sports i played sports yeah i I played um in grade school so i played uh basketball in grade school i did soccer when i was like younger younger um and then um i never played like football on a team but i would always go in high school i'd always go to um to the summer workouts just to stay in shape because i i liked working out and being in shape but i just hated team structure and so the only sport i played in high school was like lacrosse yeah so i mean yeah i wasn't like i was an athletic guy but i never considered myself like an athlete yeah like i just i i just wanted to just have fun you know like i wasn't i was in this life to like just just experience it you know what i mean um and that's part of the reason why like i decided to join the marines i was like i just want the experience of what it's like to be in the military, to be in the Marines and, you know, potentially go to war. Cause when I, when I joined, there was two wars going on. So I was like, people don't get that opportunity. Like, you know, there's people that join the military, especially pre nine 11 during peacetime where they never get to deploy or anything. So I was like, I want those experiences. Like, I don't want to just be an old 80 year old guy who worked in a factory for 40, 50 years. And those are my stories. Like yeah. I wanted stories to tell my grandkid, you know what I mean? So. And. Uh, I mean, I took, I never. So when I joined the Marines. Um, how, how uh, the. How old, uh, the. Um, crash. Uh, how long ago was my injury? Yeah. It was uh, July twenty six, two thousand eight. Eight. Yeah. So I actually wasn't in the Marines that long either. Um, so I actually never got deployed or anything, which is like kind of one of my 
biggest life regrets because I actually I waited a year before I joined. I um, was in trade school and I was a uh, studying to be a caterpillar mechanic while simultaneously working for a caterpillar dealership yeah um yeah i started like in the wash bay washing um rental equipment that would be coming in to get it prepped for the shop and then um as i went through school i was in a program where i could work and go to school at the same time um so like i've worked on big you know heavy equipment and um even worked up and, and uh, started working like in the field so out of like the field truck, okay. but I work, yeah. I, uh, the program was designed where I could go work on all the, the, we called it the heavy side, which is like the big equipment. And then the small side, which is kind of the smaller equipment, the truck side, which like they just work on rebuilding engines, the hydraulic shop, um, the rental shops. Um, so I, I got a variety of different jobs, but I loved working in the field and that's, Kind of when I, I, I knew, I knew my senior year that I wasn't going to work yeah. a nine to five, go to business school and work in an office or a cubicle. I would have been the worst. You, you could give me a million dollar salary to work in a cubicle and I would decline it because nope. I would just blow my fucking brains out. Yeah. That would just drive me insane. I never, I never wanted that traditional yeah. job. Yeah. I don't think I ever really wanted a career to be honest with you. Like I wanted to do the Marines. Um, I knew I was going to do, uh, at least eight years. Um, and then probably, I probably would have gotten out. And then I looked into, actually, I, this question got asked on my last episode. It was during like a Q and a, and it was like, what would you have done if you never got injured? And I think, um, the career field that makes the most sense for me was, um, like wildland firefighting. Cause you can do that seasonally Yeah. and then you can do whatever the hell you want. You make enough money to do whatever the hell you want the rest of the year. So like I wanted to just go travel and work, you know, that seasonal job. And then, you know, if I travel and I could always, you know, pick up a side gig here or there, or, you know, work on, you know, equipment or whatever. So I just, I, I, I'm still in life just for the experience. And so fortunately, you know, I got, I got injured while I was in the Marines. So I get a pretty good, um, medical retirement. Um, and that, just allows me the freedom to do. I thought we put that on silent. What the fuck? <laughs> but Sorry. yeah, no, I, I just, um, like now, like when I, one of the questions I hate is like, what do you do for a living? Cause it's like, uh, I don't, I, I live, I live, <laughs> I, I live life. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm like, a, I mean, I got retired when I was 20, you know? So it's yeah. like, I have the financial freedom to do, whatever I want. And I've, you know, I've gone back to school and dipped in my GI bill, um, and stuff like that. But I'm just, I'm out here to just see the world and experience things. And that's why I kind of wanted to start the podcast Yes, because I get to meet a bunch of interesting people. You know, if I, if I never got injured, I would have never met Noah. I would have never known about Oscar Mike, like, and then just like the travel opportunities that I've had. Yeah, like fate. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's, well, if you believe in it. Oh. Yeah. Oh. But like, it's, I, I do believe like everything kind of happens for a reason. And I guess yes. maybe a more dark way to look at things is like, I feel like I kind of made a deal with the devil where it's like, Hey, you can, I, I will give you the means to do everything that you want to do in life. But the catch is now you have to do it in a wheelchair as a quadriplegic. Yeah. And at this point in my life, like if you, uh, and I've, I've kind of gone back and forth with this. Like if there was a miracle cure where like I can wake up tomorrow, take a pill, wake up tomorrow, be completely fine, yeah. but I would lose all my retirement pay and I would have to, you know, start over. Like, I don't know if I would do it just because my life has been so much more interesting in a wheelchair and I've traveled to, you know, all over the world and have done things and met people. So I don't, I don't know. Not to mention, like, I, I feel like being in the chair has also made me a much better person than I was when I was a able body. Cause I was, I don't know. Some people would call me a prick. <laughs> Sorry. 
<laughs> I was an I was an aggressive, young, angry man. Okay. And now, like, I'm just totally relaxed, just chill, just go with the flow. And yeah, yeah. What happens, happens. You know what I mean? Yes. So it's like. Um. Okay, in the hospital, two, one, to press all the time, or. I love I Dr. Burton saved my life. Mm -hmm. I I'm happy. Five percent's not good odds. Yeah. I wait what? I said five percent. Those aren't good odds. Yeah, Uh, but I'm living and I'm happy ninety five percent. Yeah. Or did you um so? You graduated eventually. Yes. We went over that. Yes. Um, did you go to college or anything? Nope. No. Nope. Do you have any interest in going to college or? Because I'll tell you right now, like, there's what's stopping you from becoming a PE teacher if that's what you really want to do? Oh, uh, no. No? Not your thing? Uh, not now. Why is that? But, um, I love being, helping others yeah like oscar mike i love oscar mike and i love working and yeah and and you've only been with us like one two, one month two uh two months yeah yeah because i was just here i guess last time i was here was like mid-august and you weren't around so no. you must have came on board right after yeah Okay. What, um, what's, <laughs> actually, I got a funny one. Okay. Who's your favorite person at Oscar Mike right now? Ooh. Don't say Noah just because we're recording. No, no, no. Um, If you don't say me, I'm going to be angry. What the okay, hell? Okay, two. I'm number one, so who's number two? Yeah, uh, Mark. Mark is cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, him and I have a thing right now. Um, <laughs> we're, we're both like pretty big ge- backgammon players. Really? Yeah, and I bought a little trophy, like an Oscar Mike champion trophy. Um, and uh, we still haven't played for it. But we're, I think I'm going to play him tomorrow. Yeah. Like a three-game series <laughs> for the o- the inaugural Oscar Mike backgammon champ. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, Mark's, a, Mark's a good dude. I, I really enjoy it. Even though he um, – so, you know the office that he's using? The Marengo? Yeah, at HQ, his office. Yeah. yeah. It, it, that's actually my office. Really? And he just took it over. Oh. Yeah, that's actually my office. Like that, I set up my workshop. Like right where he has his computer and laptop, that's where I set up. But because I'm only there, you know, two weeks out of the year, he decided to just take it over without even asking anybody. I was like, you know, showed up one day. I was like, the fuck, Mark? Like the fuck out of my yeah. office, dude? He's like, oh, I've just, I've just been here, just using it. I'm like, all right, dude, but I mean, tidy it up, dude. Like, there's fucking shit everywhere, dude. Come on. Like, oh my God. Who's your least favorite person? Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. You don't have to answer that. We already know. It's Noah. Sure. I mean, come on. He's a dick. For a boss? Total dick. Sure. <laughs> what um what events have you done if any with oscar mike the events yeah like have you gone to like any spartan races or anything no but once um the bow thing the, I heard you and Lori, I think, talk, yeah. or uh, yeah. you guys were talking about the boat race. Yeah. What yeah. was that? Because I don't know anything about it. Uh, I'll, I, um, 
hot. And was this like a dragon boat race or? N- no, uh, the boat. Uh, nothing boat. Uh, I'm not sure I know what you mean. Yes. In Rock. Uh, right there in the on the river in Rockford? Yeah. Uh, nothing boat. Was it like a race or not? Oh, uh, yeah. Sort yes, of, kind of. Um, Wait, was this that big, like, Navy ship-looking yeah, yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah. I'll have to, I, when I edit this, I'll have to splice a video of that, because that was cool. So you were on that boat? No. No? No. Uh, Jeff was on the boat. Do you, um, because, like, right now we're, like, really big into, like, Spartan and stuff like that. Like, would you ever want to do a Spartan race? Yeah, uh... Um, Are you signed up to do one? Yeah. Uh, Wait. Wiggly is it, Field. I isn't know. that like... That's this weekend, right? No. What's the one? I thought they were doing... Oh, no. They're doing... I think they're doing Nashville this weekend. But um, Wrigley's in November, right? Yeah. It's coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Have you been training or anything to prepare for that? No. Uh, recumbent bike. Well, you've been going around the yeah, lake. But with, yeah, that's a good. That's a good push too. That's well, like a four and a half mile. Yeah, four. Loop. Yeah, yeah, around the lake. Yeah, but this is a, a stadium, so it's not yeah, crazy uh, on the distance. Stairs but. or I don't know. Are stairs challenging for you with um, like what you got going on? No. no. Yes. So you're yeah. you're gonna do it in running shoes. You're not gonna use one of the uh, lever wheelchairs or anything. Oh no. Yeah. Uh, running shoes. Okay. <laughs> are you excited? Are you nervous? Uh, scared. What are you scared about? I don't know. <laughs> it's gonna be plenty of people there, where they're just gonna peer pressure you into. Oh yeah. Not looking like a little wimp. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I've never done one, so I can't really talk shit well, about it. Really? Why? I, it's our dick boss. What? Noah just... He doesn't... Noah hates when I one-up him. Oh. So, like, you know, when I was in the kitchen, I was like, hey, I'm going to go to Hawaii and do the trifecta. <laughs> he was just like... What is... What? <laughs> like, uh, you're going to do a trifecta? <laughs> what is... Trifecta. So I, uh, tri- the trifecta. Yeah. I'm not an expert on Spartan races or anything, but from what I understand, a trifecta. So there's three different Spartan races. They do like the sprint, the super, and the beast. And I think okay. those have to do with like the distances. But a trifecta is when you do all three of those in a calendar year. Oh. So yeah, like oh. the that flag that's right there with the red, green, blue. Yes. That's like you you earn a piece of the trifecta, and then when you finish it, you get you you complete the circle and you put the three medals together, oh. and then you get your trifecta. But you have to do it in a calendar year. Okay. So the Hawaii trifecta is just over one weekend. So I would do two races on the first day, and then the I think I do the beast, the big one on the second day okay so i would do my trifecta in just one weekend okay for sure and that's just for my personal challenge because everyone that i've talked to that is in a wheelchair that's done a a spartan race they were like it was fun like it was it was somewhat challenging but i was expecting a little bit more so i'm just like well i'm more yeah. athletic than most of you guys and like I I will put myself through that so I was just like oh and then also another thing is like to do a standard trifecta in a calendar year you have to travel to three different spots so it's like well fuck why don't I just go to Hawaii and just crank it out in one weekend like yeah one plane ticket get her done fly back home call it good and it's in Hawaii so uh, yeah I want 
I never been to out of the country. What's the furthest you've ever been west? West? Yeah, towards like California. Like you ever been to California or Vegas? Yeah, oh, Las Vegas. You've been to Vegas before? Yeah, but... My before family. or after you were 21? Oh, after. Really? Um, yeah, but... Bachelorette party? No, my family. Oh, well, don't say it like that. It could still be fun. Yeah, no. But you been, so you've been to California? No. No? Just Vegas. You, you, so you've never been on the West Coast? Like Oregon, Washington? No? All right. Well, you hang around us enough, like, you'll eventually... You'll get out there. Because before I got injured, um, the furthest east I've ever been was Phoenix. Okay. Yeah. I'd only been to, like, five states before I got hurt. Really? Yeah. And now? I think now I'm at, like, 42. Yeah, I, got, I just got, in, like, eight to go. And the countries? Countries, I've been to, like, a dozen. Yeah. You've been to like you've never been to Canada? Nope. Oh, Canada's cool. <laughs> but okay. yeah, that was um. Be so before I got hurt, the countries that I went to, I went to Canada because it's a six-hour drive from Oregon. Um, and then I have uh, I have a bunch of family in Australia. Oh. On my mom's side, yeah. Um, oh, what in this city? They're Lao. Okay. Yeah, my mom. My mom immigrated from Laos uh, oh, okay. in the um, early '80s, so she came to the states. But then um, her four sisters and her mom uh, went to Australia, and so I have like eight or nine cousins that are full blown Australian accent and everything. Really? Four, four aunts that are over there, and, hey, and then my mate. grandma. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Okay. Good day, mate. <laughs> Yeah. Go get some Maccas. <laughs> get a burger and some chips. <laughs> Australia is such a... I'm, I'm not good at accents, but Australia is a really unique accent. I want to live one, too. It's an amazing place. I went there um, last December. Yeah, oh, I went, yeah. I went there for a month. Hot. It was, yeah. It was in their <laughs> summer, so it was like 40 degrees Celsius, which is... I don't know, a hundred something. Uh, it was hot. Yeah, it was, but it was, it was cool. Cause normally like in the past when I went there, um, my mom would actually send me there in the summertime, uh, our summertime during summer break, oh. just to get me out of the house and keep me out of trouble. She'd send me to Australia and I would work. Um, my, one of my aunts has a, uh, a Thai restaurant there. So I would go there and work in her Thai restaurant. And then one of my other aunts has a, uh, she sells like incenses and like oils and shit yeah. at like the flea market. So I would go help her on the weekends. Okay. Um, so that was kind of like my mom's way of just keeping me out of trouble. And so, yeah, like I went to Australia and then we went on a, like a big family trip to Laos, um, right before I, I left for the Marines. Ah. So, but then besides that, like I hadn't really been, I like, I never went to, Me I went to Mexico for the first time, like two years ago. Oh. Yeah. And? What did I think? Yeah. When was the first time? First time I went to Mexico was for a wedding, actually. Okay. It was one of my buddies uh, from Oregon. He got, he got married to a girl who originally, I think she was, she was born in Argentina, but grew up in Mexico. And then they met in Israel. He went to school in Israel because he, um, uh, his family is Israeli. Um, and so he served in the Israeli defense forces. And then after that, he decided to stay there and go to school. And then okay. he, he met um, his uh, fiance and they ended up getting married in uh, Puerto Vallarta. Oh. So I went there. I was... Um, I was uh, one of the groomsmen for the wedding, so we went down there. My brother and I went down there, and that was our first time in Mexico. And then, um, and then I got dive certified, and went uh, scuba diving in oh. in Cozumel. 
and oh Cozumel was Cozumel's yeah. amazing yeah I would a hundred percent if if I could own a house outside of the U.S. I think it would have to be in Cozumel it'd either be in Cozumel or in Australia I, I wanna go yeah <laughs> have you ever tried like scuba diving or anything no I, I uh, I'm down. There's nothing that would, you know, stop you from doing it at yeah. all. I think, yeah, as long as you're not afraid of like, I don't, I don't, there's no reason to be afraid of scuba diving anyways. Yeah. There might be like a little bit of claustrophobic issue, but like for someone like you, like you, if you're, if you're just willing to try it, like it's awesome. Yeah. Like I'm just down for it. It takes, it, 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 it sometimes when I'm under there, it takes me a second to realize like, dude, you're 30 feet below the surface and you're just breathing off of, you know, your, your tank, like you're through your regulator and you're just like, this is not your yeah. environment. Like humans aren't supposed to be down here, but it's just, it's an incredible feeling, especially for, for me. And I've talked about this before. Um, is like the, I think the best thing about scuba diving is I can play wheelchair rugby and I can go you know ride my hand cycle or get on my mountain trek and go off road and on trails and everything but all those things involve or you know a wheelchair or some kind of adaptive equipment where yeah. scuba diving it's just me and my body and all the scuba equipment that anyone else wears. So the same equipment that you would wear, I could yeah. wear. Yeah. And like, I'm just independent of a wheelchair. Um, and that's, I think that's one of the most freeing feelings like that you can get. Um, and that's, that's why I've, it's become like my new thing. If I would have discovered scuba diving before wheelchair rugby, I would have never, I don't think I would have ever really pursued wheelchair rugby. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that's not to say like wheelchair rugby has done a lot for me um as far as like you know meeting other quads and helping me towards my independence and everything but i think with um scuba diving it's just the freedom of being under the water and then also like you get to travel to all these cool destinations you know like scuba diving in cosmo like i just got back from bonaire um last month like not even I wasn't even four weeks ago I was scuba diving in Bonaire which was a country that I'd never even heard of yeah so no I I think um I wanna travel the world yeah it's you I, I think it should be required yeah um like you need to experience because I, I always use the analogy like we live in like this first world bubble yeah. where, you know, Wi-Fi, running water and food is guaranteed for us where you go to some of these other countries and it's like, oh, they don't have electricity or they yeah. live, you know, they live in this little hut and they have to go walk a mile and get water and then boil that water just to be able to do dishes with it yeah. or cook with it you know and it's like the problems all the problems that we have you know the hashtag first world problem thing like it's true because we're so comfortable that we kind of get lost in the fact that like we take a lot of things for granted like a grocery store go to the grocery store and you can you know find exactly what you need and 30 different kinds of cheese yeah you know and like i mean the water that you've freaking take a shit into is cleaner than i don't know what the numbers are but you know there's the, the fact that people still don't have yeah. access to clean water in 2019 just blows my mind yeah and it takes to get you have to get out of that bubble and see because I, I i would be willing to bet the majority of the world doesn't live like we live and how we're so used to you know the things that we just we constantly take for granted you know yes so it's like you gotta you gotta get out there and just see it for yourself because you can see it i mean you know it's 2019 you can get on youtube and you can youtube all that but until you see it in person it it, it definitely changes you and and i noticed that 
um, when I was an able body because, you know, we went to Laos before I got um, injured. And I, I mean, you know, I saw it like we every time we go to Southeast Asia, we always um, stop by this uh, orphanage for uh, blind kids. And then um, a couple of my trips recently, like I went to I went there, I went to Cambodia um, with uh, the Bali Sports Foundation to kind of go around to different rehabilitation hospitals and demonstrate wheelchair rugby for people that are paralyzed yeah. overseas. Because you imagine, I mean, like life sucks paralyzed in the U.S., but when you're over, you know, in Cambodia, like a lot of those guys don't even make it because of the 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 medical field is so far behind. Like I, I'd be willing to bet if I had my injury in Cambodia, I would not have survived. And I honestly would be willing to bet if you had your aneurysm in. Yeah. Yeah. It just things would be just be completely different, you know. And it's um kind of shows the importance of like giving back. Because I mean, Oscar Mike does a great job with helping, you know, the veterans. Yeah. Um, but I also feel that veterans are more taken care of than just a civilian. And an American civilian is infinitely better off than, you know, someone that was injured in like a country, say like Paraguay or, you know, uh, Vietnam. Yeah. So that's, um, that's, that's why I like to travel. It's just to see how other people are doing it out there. Yeah. Where, what's your like dream destination? Uh, Italy. Yeah. Venice. Yeah. Or, or uh, Australian. That could be fun. Yes. I've never been to, I've only been to Europe once to Switzerland. Oh yeah. But Italy I think would be incredible. I feel like I, I would need like a month there. Yeah, or two. Or just, you know, a year. Yeah. <laughs> but um, why, so why Italy? The food? Uh, pasta, yes. Would you, so would you want to like go work and learn how to make like pasta? pasta and, yes. That's awesome. Do you cook a lot? Maybe. When you feel like it? Yeah. Uh, I love cereal. Who doesn't like cereal? <laughs> yeah. What's and your mac and... Oh, what? Well, well and mac, mac and cheese, and you're going to say? <laughs> yeah, we, I think we gave you a new nickname tonight. Yeah. I think it mac is going to have to be mac and cheese. <laughs> but, uh... Uh... I forgot what I was going to ask. Um, uh, what's your favorite cereal? That's yeah, what I was going to uh, ask, actually. Bros, uh, wheat thing thing. Wheat thins? Yeah. Frosted wheat thing. It's way too dry. Frosted. Even like then. Like milk. Even then. Nah. I was always a frosted flakes guy. Oh, yeah. Tony the Tiger. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Get them, and, uh, let it let it soak up. Get a little bit soggy. Yes, and but wheat cinnamon, thins, cinnamon. cinnamon twists. Yes. <laughs> or no, no, no. Uh, well, cinnamon toast crunch. Yes. <laughs> yeah, those were good. Cause yeah. so, we used to buy um, the variety pack from Costco. Oh. And it was always Fruit Loops, cinnamon toast crunch, and Lucky Charms. Oh, okay. Yeah, but then I discovered. <gasps> I think I just, I don't know how I discovered Frosted Flakes, but then I got on Frosted Flakes and yeah. that was always my jam after that. So, yeah. Um, uh, uh, a different subject. Um, the right arm no right leg is drop foot oh yeah yeah um electric walk aid do you wear anything now yeah every... oh, wait hold up let's see this thing 
I'm not. Oh, yeah, there it is. You sure that's not an ankle monitor? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, uh, like. So wait, what is that? Okay, so for those that aren't watching the YouTube, she's got a, it's an ankle bracelet, but she's wearing it right below her knee. Yeah, and a walk aid. Yeah. What does that do for you? I oh, dang. Yeah. So you're, are you gonna wear that during the Spartan race? Like, you, you, what, what happens if you don't wear it? You're just uh, your foot yeah, is just yeah. donezo. Yeah. Hmm, that's interesting. Cause there's um, uh, people in chairs also get drop foot. Yeah. From just. Like you. I don't. I I think a lot of people get it from um, the way they sleep. So yeah, my I mean my feet are completely limp, but they're they don't. There's guys that like their foot are just in a complete downward okay. position. Okay. And I think that's has to do with a lot like how they sleep. So if I can, I try to sleep on my stomach and get really? Yeah. Sleeping on my stomach's like my best position just cuz it alleviates all the pressure off yeah, of my yeah. back and then right. also off my butt. <laughs> um do you like a chiropractor or not sometimes okay yeah not regularly but um the one that i was going to see he taught me how to do all of the things so like my brother knows how to pop my back um and wow. i can i can instruct people like how to like hey because that's my that's my biggest thing is like getting my my spine straightened out and getting my back popped but i go to massages pretty Ooh. regularly i try to go if i can if i'm in town i'll try to go at least once a week but definitely after like a big travel so like um you know we got we got the ball coming up on friday yeah <laughs> <laughs> we'll get into that in a little bit uh but then right after the ball i'm taking off and i'm going to uh paraguay to yeah do uh santa's day for what santa's day yeah, yeah, I leave Saturday and I go, um, I'm going for a, like a wheelchair rugby clinic that we're putting on. Um, and then I get back, I, I come back, I come back here um, and I'll be just staying here throughout the week and then we're going to New Hampshire. Oh, here? Yeah, I come back, I'll, I'll be back here on the 27th and, oh. and then I'm staying for that week and then we're going to New Hampshire for a tournament. Oh. Yeah, and then... Uh, so when I get back home, I'm, I'm going to fly. I'm probably most likely going to fly from New Hampshire back to Oregon. And um, I'll, pro I'll, I'll be scheduling a massage for probably not that Monday, but like that Tuesday. I want to like get like the soreness to settle in and then go see my guy on Tuesday. But yeah, I, I definitely, after a big trip, um, I'll, I'll go get tuned up. And then honestly, if I can, I'll, I'll, I'll just try to get in once a week just because yeah it feels good to get out of the house and go do something and then get, you get rubbed down alone? by another man in the massage or no, no, no. at home yeah uh no um my folks and i we own a house together oh yeah good but i mean i'm hardly ever home it, it's so sad like how much i'm not home I've i've been a little bit better this year sort of compared to like years past but yeah. there's been there's been some years where it's like i'm home maybe three months out of the year and i'm either here or on the road or just somewhere you know but mm -hmm. i i do i mean i enjoy being home and just resting and kind of catching up on on things and so yeah after after november at, like after i get back from new hampshire i'm Pretty much just gonna be chilling out. I know we got we got a rugby tournament in Houston in like December. And that's really all I got on the schedule. Well, I guess we're also it we're is. doing the Vegas marathon, half marathon, which it's not too late. And you said you wanted to sign up. That's only like four weeks away. So half. Yeah, thirteen point one miles. What time? What day is it? It's uh, November seventeenth. Oh. So the cool thing about the Vegas Marathon is it's up and down the strip. 
and they only close the strip two times a year, one time for New Year's and one time for the marathon. And it's at night, so you get to run up and down the strip at night with all the lights and everything. And it's gonna be a good time. Okay. Uh okay. Maybe. Wait, no, you have a Spartan. Yeah. You uh, can't do it. Yeah. Maybe next time. Uh, next year. Yeah. I don't know if I want to do it again. Because I did it, I've done it before back in like 2012 when I was living in Vegas. Half marathon? It was a half, yeah. I did a, I did a full this summer in my rugby chair. Um, what? Oh my God. That's, what Noah, that's why Noah was training for the Chicago Marathon. That's why he's been going around the lake so many times. Because he was originally supposed to do the Chicago Marathon and I don't know, he fucking pussied out or something. <laughs> but, so, yeah, like... Um, Noah, me, and a few guys, or you, um, are going to uh, Chicago Marathon next year. Maybe. 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 I mean, I, uh, the... I could do it, but... I'm not going to do it in a hand cycle. No. Oh. Yeah. No, I don't. The So, I mean, you think about it, what a marathon is. Yeah. Not everybody should be able to do a marathon. And, like, when Noah did the Chicago hand cycle, like, he did his, the last marathon he did was in Chicago. It was in a hand cycle. And it's like when you got the gears and everything, I just feel like that's, that's too much of an advantage. It'd be like an able body doing it in a bicycle. And I feel like every able body should be able to bike 26.2 miles but not everybody can run 26.2 miles so yeah. I, I i wanted to do it in a rugby chair just for a, a challenge you know because if you're if you're going to do a bicycle like I'm, I'm signing up to do um the seattle to portland bike ride and that's 202 miles over two days and i feel like that would be an athletic achievement so like when I look at doing a marathon in hand cycle, it's like, well, that's just like a bike ride. Like that's not, you shouldn't get a medal for that, you know? Mm. So I wanted the challenge. I wanted the challenge. Yeah. Yeah. And so when I did the Oregon marathon, I scouted out the course and everything. And what ended up happening was there was one section where it was like three quarters of a mile of uphill. Like, you know, the big hill that's here, mm -hmm. it was steeper than that for three quarters of a mile. Wow. But when you get to the top of it, you go seven miles downhill where I didn't even have to push my chair. All I had to do was just steer. Yeah. So I counted, I was like, I can't count that because I coasted for seven miles. So I I'd signed up to do another one in Florida and I researched and found the flattest, it's one of the flattest courses in the US it's like right it's called the A1A it's like right along the beach on like their little uh like boardwalk yeah walkway or whatever so it's like almost completely flat so when i finish that then i then i'll you know be like okay i did a marathon in my rugby chair i mean i still did but i i mean <laughs> 7 yes. miles off of the hill <laughs> wasn't it wasn't that bad it was challenging i'll give i'll give it that it was challenging and i had to train for it but like no i'm 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 all about challenges in life now like athletic challenges and you know i've already kind of accomplished what i'm gonna accomplish in rugby you know like i was i was on the u.s team for a year and yeah like it's i'm at the point in my rugby career where um i just need to pass off everything that I learn, kind of stay around, you know, obviously stay around with like the militia and everything, but I'm always looking for the next kind of like athletic challenge. So I'm going to crank out that marathon, do the Seattle to Portland and the trifecta, and then just figure out what I want to do next. I got a couple of ideas in my head of things that I want to do. Um, eventually I want to ride a hand cycle across the country. I think that would be fun. Yeah. Um, so I mean, it's like, like I said earlier, like I got the freedom to kind of do whatever I want. So it's like, might as well just yeah. take advantage of this and go do something cool and, and, you know, 
make the stories that I want to tell my grandkids down the line. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like what, um, do you have any like ambitions like that as far as like athletically, like do you want to climb a mountain or, uh, no, scuba uh, dive, what scuba dive. Yes. Uh, I want to, uh, 50, 50 states. 50 states. So how many have you, do you think you've been to? Okay. Illinois. That doesn't count. <laughs> uh, Wisconsin, Indiana, Michigan, uh, Tennessee, um, Florida, New York, um, North Carolina, Texas. You've been around. Yeah. That's almost 10 right there. In Ohio? Oh, I. No. Uh, Iowa. Yeah. Yeah. So pretty much all the surrounding states. Oh, uh, Arkansas. Yeah. And Mississippi. What's been your favorite place in the U.S. so far? Talk, talk, Michigan. Really? Yes. I don't think I've. I don't even know where that is. Right by Lake Michigan. Okay. Yeah, my cousin. Alec owns a restaurant, Crow. Yeah. Uh, like homemade everything. Okay. How far is that if you were to drive? Here? From here. Mm, four hours. Less than four hours. That's not that far. No. Yeah. See, the, uh, so the thing on the West Coast is everything's so spread out. Uh huh. Where, I mean, Seattle is only two and a half hours away, and like BC is six hours but like san francisco is like eight hours away uh idaho which i'd never been to until i was paralyzed that's a neighboring state like i never went to idaho and that i mean boise's six hours from portland Mm -hmm. so everything's like just spread out you know so there's not really a lot that i can do outside of like oregon washington yeah but but yeah like i mean i get to check off new hampshire in two weeks that's like a state that i hadn't been to Um, a lot of them are just in the northeast okay yeah west west virginia alaska and then almost all the ones up in the northeast like you know the small ones like connect oh and another thing though is i don't count a state if i didn't spend the night there oh yes yeah yeah. so like i've been i've been no yeah yeah so like i've been to like connecticut and delaware but just drove through so yeah, I, I don't count no. those. Like I actually have to stop and do something and stay the night. So, yeah. I mean, for the longest time, like, you know, I, I used to live in Birmingham, Alabama and I didn't count Georgia cause I would always fly in and out of Atlanta or we would drive through Georgia to get to like Florida, but I never yeah. spent the night there. And finally, you know, one night I was just like, all right, we're going to, yeah. we're, we're going to stop and, and have dinner and, and stay the night. And, and then I ended up, um, uh, scuba diving the aquarium there, which was an incredible experience. Really? Yeah, they have. Um, I forget how big the uh, this their one of their big is, exhibit is, but it's uh, they have like four whale sharks, which are like the size of school buses, and just a bunch of uh, I forget how many like big manta rays they have, but it's I mean it's a giant tank. I don't know how many wow. millions of gallons it has in it. But I mean, four whale sharks, so four school buses swimming around. Um, it was it was really cool. It was it was wow. an awesome experience. One of those things that, like, I mean, before I got injured, I would have never. If I would have discovered scuba diving in high school, I think I would have just been like a scuba dive instructor, <laughs> and just travel around and just you know just work in different locations and just that's what I would have done. But that I never grew up knowing about any of those career fields or that people that did that you know and i I just thought scuba diving was like a rich white person sport that i would never do you know (laughs) wait wait what 
I thought I thought like scuba diving was like a rich white girl sport, like oh. or no, no white girl, white white person sport. Yeah. That like I, you know, I was just like I'm never gonna do that. Like what are you talking about? You know, well, kind of like horses, like, like horses. Yeah, like a uh, surfer. Surfer's different. You can be poor and be a surfer. I actually thought about just becoming a beach bum in uh, oh, California yeah. and just surfing like. Yeah, I was I was actually a big surfer because you can surf in Oregon. The water's cold, but you can yes. you can surf in yeah. in uh, Oregon, and I've I've surfed in um, California. I wanna do sur- surfing. Surfing's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Even now, like I mean, we like through Oscar Mike, I was able to do. Um, I went to two of the surfing events out in New Jersey, and uh, that was that was a lot of fun. Like yeah. it's. I mean, it's never going to be the same as it was. Oh, we're being interrupted. What's up? Hi. Could you give us like 15 minutes? We're just recording. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what? No, we're good. What time is it? It's a... Uh... 7:43. We we actually just broke an hour. See, oh, wow. So, so I told you it goes yep. by quick. <laughs> it really does. Do you want to? We can wrap this thing up if you want. Uh, no. You sure? Yeah. All right. You having fun? Yeah. Yeah. So what were we, we were talking about before we were rudely interrupted? We were talking about surfing. Surfing. Like you could be. <laughs> you, you, I think. I think surfing would be awesome for yeah. you. You seem, have you always been kind of like drawn to the water? Um, yeah. Yeah. That's interesting because like you live in Illinois, which <laughs> it might be the furthest way from any ocean yeah. like you can get to in the U.S. So. Um, in uh, like Michigan. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, no, it's until that. you get to the ocean. Yes. And you realize like it this thing just goes on yeah, on on. Yeah, it just goes on, and on. it just goes deeper and yeah, and I mean the the creatures that you're going to find in the ocean. No. I don't know what you find in Lake Michigan, but <laughs> not <laughs> sharks. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just like dead dead bodies and Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Just a bunch of trash and just dead bodies. <laughs> Maybe like a fish or two, but oh, n- not fish. There's fi- there's got to be fi- like three eyed fish and shit. <laughs> um, yeah. What's uh like? So if you were to start scuba diving, what like what creature? Turtles. What's that? Turtles. Turtles? Yes. Turtles are cool. Yes. Yeah. Turtles are really cool to see because the way they swim. Yeah. Uh, a yeah. little baby yeah. turtle and huge turtle. Yeah. I saw a loggerhead in um, a loggerhead turtle in Cozumel that was, I swear, it had to been the size of like a Volkswagen Beetle. Oh, like a flattened yeah. out Volkswagen Beetle. This thing was a dinosaur. But um, one of the things, I'm going to pull up a picture. Hopefully, I can find it. But um, one of the things that we do in uh, Cosmel is we go watch the um, uh, the turtles nest where they, like, they, you know, they birth them. Like, they, there's a big research crew out there, and they just do a, um, they, um, they comb the beach, and they find new nests, and they put markers on them. And I forget how many days. I think it's like 45 days. But after 45 days, they um, reach into the nest and they, you know, they sweep up the beach so it, they have a clear path to the ocean. Because, you know, there's like 80 to 100 eggs. Yeah. And I think the number is like only like two or three of them ever reach like adulthood and breeding age. Really? Yeah. Their numbers are not good. They're, it's worse than yours. <laughs> Let me see if I could. Let me see if I could find. Oh, here's um. So that's a picture of us or me holding uh, one of the albino turtles that they found. Oh. But yeah, they're so cool. And the amazing thing is, like, they know right away as soon as like 
they get out of their shell and they like wake up they're like oh shit i gotta get to the ocean and they just start scurrying towards the ocean i wish i had a video of it uh, but it's it's a really cool incredible experience awesome yeah yeah, they're they're they are really like just amazing creatures. <clears throat> That's going to be um I think when I get to 100 dives, I'm like really? I just got past 50, but when I get to like 100 dives, I want to get um a turtle shell tattoo. Oh. Yeah. I want a tattoo. You don't have any, do you? Yeah. I was going to ask you this the other night. You don't have any. No. What would you get? And don't say butterfly oh, or a lizard no. tattoo. No. That's such a... Well, the butterfly thing is... I think that's huge in the Midwest. Um, behind the boobs. Um, behind? Under? No, no, no. Uh, the thing. Uh, like an under boob tattoo? Yeah. Um, happiness. Yeah. In Chinese? No. In cursive? That'd be cool. And the uh, sun. That's almost like a double entendre, too, because anyone that sees it is going to be looking at your boob and they're going to be thinking, like, oh, yeah, happiness. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> or um, good, uh, good vibe. Would you ever get an Oscar Mike tattoo? Yes. What would you get? Come on. No, Everybody has that logo. Why? Everybody has that logo. Oh, what? Are you, you haven't seen mine yet. Because no. I've been, it's been cold, so I've been wearing a hoodie <laughs> the whole time. I could show you mine after we get off. Well, you should have seen it in the picture. Okay. But yeah, I, I actually custom designed mine. Oh. Yeah. Because I didn't want like any. The. The standard, Same. the stamp, well, the yeah. stamp, the stamp that everybody gets. I wanted just something unique. Okay. It, I'm not knocking against it because I think it's cool. And if you're willing to put a company's logo on a your small, body. Small, small. Yeah. Huge shoes. <laughs> <laughs> when, uh, let's just do it. Why don't we do it Friday before the ball? What? Let's go get tattoos. No. Friday before the ball. No. I'll pay for it. No. Let's go. No. I'll get one too. Uh, uh, you, uh, what? No, no. Finish your thought because I, I got a great idea, but. Okay. No, go ahead. Um, when you back to the thing. For what? October 20. Oh, 27th. Yeah. You want to get one then? Yes. You should do one. Why don't you do one after your Spartan race? <gasps> yes. Because I feel like you See? gotta you gotta earn it. Yes. Right. I think. Okay. After the Spartan race. Yeah. I won't be here. I'll be in Vegas, but I'll get a tattoo in Vegas while you're getting a tattoo in Chicago. I I, I did I I was one of those guys. I did go party one night and get a tattoo in Vegas. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I'm down with it. It's a deal. It's it's oh, on it. Where? It's, where? Not. You should get it on the other un, under the other boob. So you have Oscar Mike on. and then happiness. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, uh, there's a lot of different good locations you can put. Like, you can put it on your leg. No. No. You could put it. Not. Tramp stamp it cross. No. That would look God. cool though. Oscar Mike cross no. the thing on the move. Let's go. No. Everybody would look at him and be like, well, it's time to go on the move. No. Oh, I thought you were saying <laughs> Oscar Mike. He's like, no, don't do that. Not yeah. across, not across the forehead. Um. I mean, you could do it like on the rib. Oh yeah. That one might. That oh. might hurt. Yeah. But wait, so. What's your sensation like on your gimp side? What? Like, what's your sensation like? Like, like do you feel pain? Right? Yeah, like, do you feel pain or hot, cold? Uh, bad. The right. Yeah. Uh, like tingly. Okay, but like you, 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 like if you were to 
lean up against something hot or cold you could tell yes okay <laughs> yeah so yeah. like a tattoo there you'd still be able to feel it yes because yeah. the one i got one on my l shin um and i got that after my injury and it felt like a ballpoint pen oh okay. yeah it didn't it didn't hurt at all really uh, but then the ones i got on my arms and stuff like after my injury i felt like it was like you, <laughs> this is gonna sound kind of nerdy but like you know how like um the superhero the daredevil yes like how he's blind but he's got like super senses because you know yeah. his, his seeing his sight is impaired but everything else is intensified so i feel the same way it happens to us where it's like my sensation below my nipples are it's impaired like i still feel but it's different yeah. so i feel like where i can feel everything is hypersensitive so the tattoos mm -hmm. that i got on my arms hurt way more than any other tattoos that I've had. So yeah. it's like, oh. no. but they're fun. We're going to get it. It's, um, it's already official because we're on the podcast and you, you've already, <laughs> that's essentially a promise. Okay. But yeah. So we're going to get you uh, an Oscar Mike tattoo after your, your Spartan race. Okay. So, but um, no, I think it's getting late. I think we just, we should just wrap this thing up. We're, we're well past over an hour or so. Okay. It was an awesome pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you. We are out.